When you're dealing with color in your photography, it's often beneficial to work with a more harmonized color palette because when your color palette's all over the spectrum, things can look a bit blah. And that's why it's often important in our photo editing to work hard to try and bring our colors into a more unified palette. And that's exactly what we'll look at in this photo edit in Luminar Neo. Let's get into it. And although this will predominantly be a video about color, of course I want to show you a little bit of the editing process along the way. So what do we want to do? Let's just throw a little bit of Accent AI on here just to see what this is going to do for us. Now usually I'll start all of my edits with the Develop Raw tool here and you guys sometimes say to me, hey my Develop Raw is just Develop, how do I get it to be Develop Raw? Well there could be two issues at play, one is you're not actually using a raw photo, maybe you're using a JPEG then obviously you won't have access to the Develop Raw tool, but if you are using Develop raw and you don't see it, chances are you've already applied a different tool which takes it away from raw and then the only way to access that is to jump into the edits tab in the top right and then you will see the develop raw tool is still accessible but it always sits at the bottom of the stack along with noiseless raw. You can do all of your raw editing first and then the other tools sit on top of that. So like I said if you're ever looking for develop raw and it's just develop and you're like well this is a raw photo that's where you're going to find it. So normally I would be in here and I'm be making changes along the way here to bring back detail in my highlights and my shadows. However, I'm going to do it a slightly different way today. I am just going to grab this photo and drag it into the HDR merge extension, click merge, and this is just going to create for me a single frame HDR file that's going to bring out a lot of that detail in the highlights and the shadows. And then I can combine that with my original photo to save me a lot of that detailed editing that we sometimes go over. So now if I open my HDR merge folder, here we can see a single frame edit spat out from Luminar's HDR merge extension, which has a lot more detail in the shadows and the highlights. However, it is a little over processed for my taste. So what I like to do is combine the best bits of this, with the best bits of the original. So let's jump back to the original, come back to the edit section. I'm just gonna come over to the layers section on the left hand side, click the plus icon, and that's gonna allow me to add a new image as a layer. So I just need to double click on the HDR mountainscape photo that we just created. And now to add that as a layer, I just need to click on it. And now Luminar Neo has loaded this HDR version over the top of our original with 50% opacity. And we can see that, that if I crank the opacity all the way to 100, we see the very crunchy looking HDR file. And then if I drop that all the way back to a zero, we see our original. And so now I can just move the opacity slider from right to left, keeping my eye on the screen and just deciding which areas do I want to steal from this HDR layer. And once I've made my decision, all I need to do is come into the masking section and I'm gonna fill the mask and show the mask so we have a solid mask. I actually want the inversion of this, so I'm gonna click invert. And so now that mask has completely hidden that HDR layer, allowing us to grab a brush and just paint it back in where we want. I like to keep my strength fairly low, maybe around 25, 30%, something like that. And that allows me just to paint that effect in with successive passes. So I really like the detail that it's bringing into this darker area here. A little detail into the highlights in the snow as well. And I think that's about all of the HDR effect that I want. So I'll just come over to that top layer and I'm just gonna right click and I'm just gonna hide the layer so that I can toggle between it being visible, show layer, and hidden, hide layer. Yep, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, super simple edit so far that's gonna allow us to get into those color tools. I've achieved that result with a really useful HDR merge extension, which if you don't have it yet, I've got a link to that in the description below. But you can also achieve a similar result just by playing around with those shadows, maybe the curves tool as well, and perhaps adding a little bit of structure into those dark areas as well. But along with a host of other benefits of the HDR merge tool, I find for these quick edits, it is absolutely perfect. But now we've got an opportunity to get into more of those color tools. We can look at some of those pros and cons of each of the tools and answer the question that you guys threw at me last video as to why I didn't go into color harmony for bringing a sense of unity into the photo I was working on and there's a very good reason for that and hopefully this video will shine some light as to why. Let's take a look. Currently we're working on an image made up of two separate layers so any editing tool that I apply is only going to affect the layer that is currently active, the one with the blue highlight around it and I want to work on my photo as a whole and so what I'm going to do is just jump to the edit section here, right click and we're just going to export this as a high quality TIFF. So a TIFF in the Adobe RGB color space with 16 bits of data rather than 8 and call it something appropriate to help you stay organized. 
So now I've got this photo open, ready for editing. You can see that it's just a single layer. So any tool that I apply, so Accent AI, for example, if I crank that all the way up, you can see that it is affecting the photo globally. And I think a little bit of this would be really beneficial for this photo. So I'm gonna scroll down, come all the way down into the professional section, and we're gonna jump straight into color harmony and see what this can do for us. Let's start with brilliance and I'm gonna move this all the way to 100 and I'll be honest straight away, I'm really not a fan of what the brilliant slider does for us. If we take it into negative territory, I just don't like what it does to the color. If we take it into the positive territory, once again, I also don't like what it's doing to the color. So I'll double click to reset it and I've gotta be honest, in spite of the name brilliance, I really don't think it's very brilliant for putting into your work. So I just leave that well enough alone. As we move on to the warmth slider, you'll see as I crank this to the right, obviously that's injecting more warmth, more oranges, yellows and red tones into the image. As we take it to the left, we're cooling things down with more blues and purples. But as I take this all the way to the left, and I zoom in here, you might be able to see that we're actually introducing an odd kind of pink color into the snow here. Again, I don't feel like this is the best tool for dealing with color balance. So I'm gonna double click to reset that and just point out that the much better alternative is that when you actually start working on your photo in the develop raw that you'd normally be in, under the color section here, this is actually where I would recommend warming up or cooling down your photo. So for example, if I push this into the cooler territory and we zoom in, that very pink color shift that we were getting when we were doing this through the color harmony section isn't present anymore. So if you're wanting to manipulate the color temperature in your photo, also known as the white balance, I would strongly recommend that you do that on the front end of your processing while you're still working on the raw file in develop raw because you're gonna get better, higher quality results doing it that way than saving it for later in the color harmony tool. If you're working on your photo and that thought of, well, I wanna change my color temperature comes to you later in the process, that's okay because you can always jump back in that edit section down to the very bottom where develop raw lives and actually still change it and that will then propagate that's the word I'm looking for back through those other tools all the way to the top of the edit I hope that makes sense but basically avoid using color harmony to change the color temperature of your photo unless you absolutely have to use it now let's move on to color contrast and I am going to grab the amount slider as I so often do and I'm going to push it aggressively to 100 so we can see what's going on oh my gosh this has really made a change let's look at our before and our after, before and after. What is going on here? We can see that the oranges have got much brighter and we can also see that the blues have got darker and more saturated. We've only got two sliders in the tool, so hopefully it won't be too difficult to reverse engineer what's actually going on here. So the other slider is the hue. And if I grab this and start moving this through the color range, hopefully you're gonna figure out what's going on here. If I settle our little slider point right here in the blue section on our spectrum, it's taken all of the blue pixels and just brightened them so extremely. It's taken the opposite on the color wheel, the orange, and darkened those down. And now if I bring this back into the orange section, you can see that it's brightened up the oranges and darkened down the opposite color, which is blue. So basically, wherever we put this slider, whichever color we sit this onto, it's gonna say, brighten that color, i.e. the blues when I put it here, and darken the opposite color. And in this photo, it's really easy to see that at work because predominantly we just have two colors at play. Because we have the morning sun coming through here and just glancing off the top of these trees, making them very orangey, what I would like to do is kind of emphasize that effect by using the color contrast to brighten them up and darken down the blue sky. So at 100%, that is far too much. And if I drag that all the way back to the beginning, you can actually see what a strong effect this is having when I crank it between 100 and zero. Wow, you know, it is actually a really useful tool and I really like this component of the color harmony. I'm going to go quite strong with that and leave that slider at 60. It's a little bit stronger than I would normally apply for a genuine edit, but I want to make it easy for you guys to really see on the video exactly what effect these tools are having. So the next tool we're going to look at is split color warmth. And just like the color contrast tool, I feel the split color warmth tool has a lot of value for us. Now, if I grab the warmth slider and start cranking that all the way up, you can see that we're introducing more of an orangey red color through the trees. Now, why is that? Well, it's because that is the color that is already warm. So this slider is talking into those colors. So wherever you've got yellows, oranges, reds, and you start moving this slider, 
that is the color that's going to be affected. So if we want to make those warms a little warmer, we can grab that slider and bump that up. And the cool slider obviously works in a similar way. Now we're talking just into those blues, which are considered cool colors. And as I move that left, we're making the blues even more darker, more saturated blue. And as I move it to the right, we're introducing more reds, which is considered a warmer color. So basically we're saying, if we move it to the right, we wanna take the cool colors, and warm them up, or if we take it to the left, we're saying take those cool colors and make them cooler. I don't really need to do much with this slider, but just for the sake of doing something in the video, I'm gonna drop that to minus eight. So we're just taking those blues and just cooling them down a little further. Now, before we move on to the color balance tool, let's jump up to the eyeball tool so we can see up before and our after before and after you can see that this is a really strong really impactful tool it's a little bit overbaked at the moment i'm just demonstrating what's going on though but of course we could come in and use our masking effect so we can just dial the overall effect back or paint it in more strongly where we want a bit more intensity but in this video i'm not going to do that and onto the color balance tool. Now this bad boy allows us to manipulate the shadows, midtones, and highlights. And that allows us to inject a color that we want specifically based on tonal value. So we may say we wanna make the shadows more purpley or we wanna make the highlights more yellow. So let me show you how that works now. So we might come into the shadows and we may grab the reds and say, you know what, I just wanna boost up the reds in those shadows, make them feel a little bit warmer. You can do the same with the magentas and maybe even make it a little yellow as well. Now, as you can see, I haven't moved these sliders too far from the center. However, the effect that I've created is pretty extreme. So you need to just be really careful with these. You don't wanna take the effect too far. Let's jump into the mid-tones, which is really good for color grading the overall look of the photo. So let's say we wanna move away from the magentas and go for more of a greeny kind of look, or how about a cyan through the whole photo? We might wanna complement that cyan by jumping into the highlights and sort of pushing in a little bit more of a warm color, the yellows and the oranges. But as you can see, we don't have to take things too far before our colors get pretty gnarly, oversaturated and blown out. So a word of caution, if you are using this tool, just go really easy with it because a little sprinkling goes a long way. It's so easy to overcook it with this tool. Now here's a pro tip on color harmony for you. And well, it's not really a pro tip, but I like it. So it's made up of four different tools and each of those are a distinct color tool that affect your photo in a different way. However, because they're all bulked together, any changes you make, you have to mask that in all together. So what I would recommend you do is actually think of those four components to the Color Harmony tool as separate individual tools. And so for instance, you could get the color contrast looking just the way you want it to look, and then you can use a distinct mask to put that only where you want it. You can then invoke a new instance of Color Harmony to deal with the split color warmth. You can play around with that and then mask that in specifically where you want it as well. Because the way it's set up at the moment, those four components to the Color Harmony tool can quickly add up to just take your colors of your photo way off track. So in one of my previous videos where I edited a lighthouse scene, and again, I talked about color harmony, color unity. A lot of you in the comments asked, why didn't you use color harmony for this? And the reason is the color tool that I actually used actually allows us to speak specifically into individual colors, whereas these tools in color harmony are much more global. So let me show you how I use the color tool to achieve more refined results. So let's scroll up to our color tool. We're gonna to open that up. And if you don't see the HSL tab open, you just need to click that so that we can have access to our saturation, i.e. how intense a color is. We also have access to the hue, which allows us to shift the actual color and the luminance, which just allows us to control the darkness or the brightness of individual colors. So we already have a very saturated image now, but normally when I am working with the color section here, the first thing I will do is temporarily grab the saturation slider and boost it all the way to 100. And that makes it much easier to actually identify what colors are where in your scene. And then you can come in, move the sliders around, get them where you want them set, and then you can just come over, double click and reset the saturation. You know what, because we are so oversaturated in the image, it's gonna be hard to work with this color tool accurately at the moment. So I'm just gonna go back into Color Harmony. I'm gonna delete that extra instance where I'd actually changed the shadows because I wasn't really enjoying that. And I'm just gonna check that this is the one where we've made most of our changes. Yep, this is the one. So I'm just gonna come into the masking section here. I'm gonna grab a brush and I'm just gonna paint this effect in with 50%. 
size all the way to 400 so that we can get it done quickly. And I'll just go back and forth and now we have that same effect but only with 50% intensity. And now I can come back into my tool section open up my color tool and now I can have a play with these colors just a little bit more accurately. So I've bumped the saturation up so I can kind of see what I'm doing a bit easier and I think I'm going to start with the hue section. And this is a great tool for unifying colors. So for example we could take the reds and push them more towards the orange, we could take the oranges and push them more towards the reds thus helping to give a more cohesive look. We can do that with the yellows as well and if I zoom into this tree here you're going to see how this affects it. If I grab the yellow slider and push that over to the right you're going to see how we're injecting green into that yellow but I would prefer to take that the opposite way so that we're able to take that yellow and push it more into the orange part of the spectrum therefore creating a better sense of color unity between these previously mismatched trees and it's that specific color remapping that we're not able to do with the color harmony tool but we can do through the color tool while our image is a slither of orange and then predominantly blues, I can see elements of purple and magenta just showing up in these sort of areas. So again, I can come in, grab the purple slider and push that to the left towards more of a blue hue. And I can grab the magenta, do the same. It's not doing too much. Let's have a little toggle of our before and our after, before and after with the color remapping. So that's dealt with the hues. Let's jump into the saturation itself. Now I really like this saturated orange, but I do feel like the blue is far too saturated. I'm just gonna grab the blue slider and bring that down to the left. If I take it all the way, obviously we drain the color completely from the photo. Don't wanna do that, but I do just wanna control the intensity of that blue. If you've moved one slider like I have with the blue here, it's often useful just grabbing the slider either side of that, so the purple for example, if I push it all the way to 100, you can see that we have quite a bit of purple contamination going on here. And so if I leave that purple sat at zero, we have a little bit of a visual mismatch where we've desaturated the blue, but its adjacent color purple is unaffected. So what I like to do is just pull that down, not necessarily the whole way, but kind of halfway between the color that you've moved down, the blue here, and the next unaffected color, in this case magenta. So we can do the same with the cyans as well, just bring that sort of halfway between blue and green. Now I've identified and made my color changes, I can double click the saturation slider, which resets that, and now we can see our before, and our after, and if, like in this case, I feel like I've taken one of those slides a bit too far, like the blue, I can just bring that back up to a point I feel happy with. Let's have a little look before and after. So far, this has been more of a practical and educational demonstration of how the Color Harmony tool works and the Color tool as well. But I won't feel right if I finish the video without doing something a little bit more creative and showing you how you can actually put these tools into effect. So let's just have a little play around with the Color Harmony tool just to finish this off and see what we can do more creatively. From how the shadows are falling on the mountains, you can tell that the sun would be off camera right. And so what I would like to do is actually brighten up the clouds here and inject some orange as though we've got the warmth of the sun in this area of the photo. And just putting a little warmer pop up in the top third of the photo may help to balance the nice orange line we've got going on more at the bottom third of the photo. So how are we gonna do that? Well, I'm just gonna play around. I'm gonna jump into the Color Harmony tool and although I said I don't like using the warmth slider, I'm gonna do it just for the sake of demonstration purposes to say, yeah, well, you can use it if you want to. So I'm gonna crank that all the way to 100 and the area I'm wanting to affect is the clouds here. I'm not really wanting to affect the blue of the sky. So I'm just gonna grab the brilliant slider and just start reintroducing some of that blue. But as I do that, consequently, we're losing a lot of that lovely orange that I introduced here. So uh, let's jump into the split color warmth because now we've cranked the warmth slider up, the clouds now exist in the yellow part of the spectrum. So any changes I make to this slider here are gonna to talk directly into those clouds, but leave the blue of the sky alone. And so I'm just gonna sort of settle this where I feel like that's gonna be a nice orange. We could also brighten the clouds by using color contrast, just by setting the hue into the matching hue range that the clouds currently exist in, which will be somewhere between that sort of orange and yellow. Best way to see the effect is to push it all the way to 100. And now as we move that, we can see how we're brightening those clouds and how we're also affecting the blue sky as well. And once we're happy with the sort of look, we can just drop this back down. We don't need to introduce too much brightening. 
I'm just doing what Luminar is so good for, and that is just playing around. So now I've got a kind of look that I like in the clouds. All I need to do is just mask that effect in because you can see it's completely destroyed the rest of the photo, which isn't what we want. I'm just focusing my eye on the clouds. I'm happy with that now. So I'll just start painting that in with a brush, masking it in. So I'll come to the masking section, and now I'll grab a brush currently set at 50% strength. I'm just going to drop that back a little more, reduce the size as well. And now let's just start painting that in. And I'm just building this up in layers. And sometimes I'm toggling between painting something in and erasing it back. So I've gone a little bit too far here. So I'll do a couple of strokes from the left hand side just to erase it from there. Let's have a little look at our before and our after, before and after. It's just injecting a little bit of warmth over on that right hand side. And now we've got our mask how we want it. We can come back in and play around. I could push that warmth slider even further so that we're getting more of a match for our orange tones here rather than a yellow. And now of course we need to do everybody's favorite bit which is the before and after. Let's do it. Before, here's our original unedited file. And here's our after, our edited version where we've predominantly just manipulated our color palette. Ooh, that was a lot to take in, but I really hope it's been useful to you guys. The topic of color and working with color in photography is so vast. If you'd like me to make another video about it and cover some of the other color tools, because yes, we didn't even cover everything. There's curves and all sorts. So if you would like me to cover more on color, let me know, just write color in the description below and I'll put something else together for you guys. Thanks so much for sticking with me. I will see you in the next video. Let me know what you thought of the video in the comments. It always means the world to me. I sit there with my coffee, reading what you guys have written, winning. All right, take care, see you in the next one.